What's up basketball fans? Happy Saturday and we are currently the company that never sleeps as we've got non-stop NBA coverage for you all off season long. Look, if you've already been subscribed, you know we've been live for most of free agency. We've got all the latest reports coming out for you as soon as we can get to them. And hey, I probably slept two hours in the past four days, so I think the least you guys could do is subscribe to the channel and help us continue to grow here on Chat Sports because we're doing all this for you guys. And unless you subscribe, none of that even matters. The biggest news of the weekend now is Gordon Hayward heading to the Charlotte Hornets. He was discussed, he was talked about that he was going to go to the Knicks and to the Pacers, maybe that he'd even return to Boston or go to Atlanta, but he's going to Charlotte on a four-year, $120 million deal. Now, remember, he signed an offer sheet with the Charlotte Hornets back in 2014 when he was a restricted free agent with the Utah Jazz. So there's already been some interest there in a level of relationship that has been discussed. Now, I know you're probably looking at Gordon Hayward in the corner down there, and then you're looking at me in the corner. I promise that's not me in the corner. That's Gordon Hayward. We're not brothers, not related. I swear. But I kind of wish we were now that he's making 120 mil. Now, when healthy, Gordon Hayward was really solid for this Celtics team, and we'll just have to see how healthy he can be for Charlotte when he moves forward. He averaged 18 points per game, put up seven boards, and a dish out about four assists, also shot 38%. But now he's going from Boston to a young Charlotte team where he's going to make his money, and you look at it and you're like, all right, Hayward opting out of $34 million makes a little bit more sense now, so go ahead and give me your one-word reaction to Gordon Hayward headed to the Charlotte Hornets for four years, $120 million. I think uh, producer Dylan said it best when he said, damn, because uh, I, I did not expect that to happen, especially not to the Charlotte Hornets. But you kind of look at what this Hornets team has now. and Look, they're not going to be good, okay? They're not going to be a team that, I, I mean, they're not going to be bad. They're not going to be good. They'll be kind of mediocre, but they'll be fun to develop because now you have LaMelo Ball and Devontae Graham in the backcourt. I love that backcourt. I love the draft pick of LaMelo Ball at three. I had him as my second best player in the draft, and now he goes to the Hornets. And then Devontae Graham is a great shooter that could have won most improved player, was at least in the running for it. You throw in P.J. Washington in his second year. Cody Zeller's in the middle, but I would expect him to get moved as a bit of cap relief with Gordon Hayward. And then you also have guys like Terry Rozier, Malik Monk, and Miles Bridges off the bench. It's going to be pretty fun, if you ask me. Not great but fun for sure. Now, the Boston Celtics, on the other hand, you kind of have to take a look at what's going on with them. They lose Gordon Hayward, and you kind of thought you were going to lose him anyway, but you thought you were going to lose him in a sign-and-trade deal. That's not the case anymore. Now, luckily for Boston, they did draft Aaron Neesmith out of Vanderbilt, which I think was a great pick as he was my most pure shooter, the best pure shooter in the draft for me. I didn't love the Peyton Pritchard pick. As you guys know, I broke that down. I didn't think it was an incredible pick. Yamadar probably not going to come over right away, although he wants to. We'll see what happens with him. But what's next for the Boston Celtics? I'm not sure because I think a lot of what they were going to do this offseason relied pretty heavily on Gordon Hayward going to another team in a sign-and-trade deal. So if you guys want to know what's next and what does happen next with the Celtics, I want to make sure you subscribe to our brand new Celtics channel at youtube.com slash Celtics TV. That's right. We got that shiny new custom link for you to go on and click. Help us get to 2,000 subscribers. We're currently at 1,876. We're almost there. I think we can do it by the end of the weekend. Now, look, if you need to go out and replace your Gordon Hayward Boston Celtics jersey, our friends over at Fanatics have got you hooked up at chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys for up to 25% off jerseys all across the website. You can get these brand new Nike edition jerseys, any team you want, whether it's Boston Celtics or not. If it is the Celtics, great. If it's another team, you can pick them up. You can get some jerseys for $52, other jerseys for $85. If you don't really care about the brand, get that $52 jersey. If you want that Nike jersey, 82 bucks at the Fanatics website. One more time, that's chessports.com slash NBA jerseys. Whether you're a Celtics fan or any other team, we've got those ready for you at that link. The next move made on Saturday, actually the first real big move of, the, of Saturday, was Fred Van Fleet going back to the Toronto Raptors for five years, $85 million. I think it's a pretty solid deal, honestly, for both sides. He's getting paid as much as Joe Harris, and uh, 
he's better than Joe Harris. So I like this deal for Toronto. I love that Fred Van Fleet gets paid, a kid that was basically unrecruited coming out of high school, goes to Wichita State, and just has an amazing year for the Toronto Raptors and has had really an amazing career so far. This past year he put up his career high 17.6 points per game, and he was playing quite a bit as well for this Toronto team. He can play in the same backcourt as Kyle Lowry, or he can be that kind of six-man role, but now – I think this team is, is really his to command alongside Pascal Siakam, OG Ananobi, and who knows, maybe this signals the end of Kyle Lowry in Toronto, but I wouldn't be surprised if they keep him alongside him as well. So go ahead and grade the deal, A, B, C, D, or F. Honestly, I give it an A on both sides. I think Toronto did what they wanted to do by keeping their guy, and Fred Van Fleet gets paid. Go get the bag, Fred Van Fleet, but give me your grades below A, B, C, D, or F. Now, one trade that happened <laughs> real late Friday night as I was not sleeping and it came across my timeline was Steven Adams to the New Orleans Pelicans. I kind of had a feeling he was on his way out anyway, but now it is official as he's going to play alongside Zion Williamson. Now, the deal was super confusing. I'm not going to try to break down all the details because it was about a four-team trade and it all kind of tied back to Drew Holiday. But at the end of the day, Steven Adams to the Pelicans, draft picks to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Eric Bledsoe also remains a part of the trade going to the New Orleans Pelicans as well. And listen, if this Pelicans team is going for a playoff spot, they're not far off. You have a, a backcourt of Lonzo and Eric Bledsoe. Now, offensively, that's a bit of a question mark, huge question mark. But assuming they bring back Brandon Ingram, and who knows, by the time you're watching this, they may have already signed him to his max contract. And you have two big men in the middle in Zion and Steven, Steven Adams. I love what the Pelicans have done this offseason. I think they've made some good improvements to this roster. Also, drafted Kyra Lewis Jr. in the draft. Solid pickup. So, do you think they're going to make the playoffs? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Look, in the Western Conference... Still going to lean no, but I don't think they're far off, and I think they'll be there for the next few years. Another trade that came down late Friday night was one between the Dallas Mavericks, Detroit Pistons, and the Oklahoma City Thunder again getting involved. I like this trade on really the Mavs side and the Thunder side as they get some cap relief, but at the end of the day, uh, I don't know what the Pistons are doing again. I think DeLon Wright in the right context is good. He wasn't good with the Mavs. Trevor Ariza is just another veteran player. This one was confusing as well, as we all thought Ariza was going to the Mavs, and then he ends up on the Pistons. We thought Justin Jackson was going to the Pistons, and then we thought DeLon Wright was going to the Thunder. But these are the exact details. Mavs get James Johnson. Pistons get two guys. The Thunder get Justin Jackson from the Dallas Mavericks. Pretty simple trade there. But if you want this trade broken down more in depth, go to our All Things Mavs channel at youtube.com slash allthingsmavs. We just hit 10,000 subscribers. Uh, it was kind of crazy. Woke up all of a sudden, and we were right there, and then we did it. So thank you guys that have subscribed. If you haven't already, go check it out. I'm doing the coverage on that channel every day. Let's go a little bit of rumors here and kind of shy away from the newsy stuff. John Wall is officially requesting a trade from the Washington Wizards after reports that he and Bradley Beal kind of wanted to you know, team up and recruit players. He now wants out, and so the Wizards are going to have to find someone that's willing to take on three years, $132 million for a guy that hasn't played organized basketball in 695 days. That's not an exaggeration. He has not played basketball in the NBA in 695 days. That's wild. Now, the other side of this is Russell Westbrook, as there was apparently a deal discussed between John Wall and Russell Westbrook, a swap from Houston to Washington for those two point guards. Now, when healthy, we're about the same player. They're pretty similar players, both athletic point guards, um, but nothing ever came of it. The Magic also discussed a Russell Westbrook trade. That didn't happen. Nothing came there. So what I want you guys to do is pick a point guard for me. I was going to do type W for John Wall, type W for Russell Westbrook. That doesn't work. So put in their initials. Which one would you rather have? JW for John Wall, RW for Russell Westbrook. If you're not typing RW for Russell Westbrook, you just meet, must be a bit really big uh, John Wall fan. What was that old John Wall dance? Do the John Wall? Yeah, I don't think anybody's doing that anymore. So you can type your RW or JW for whichever point guard you'd rather have. We're going to go rapid fire through all the transactions that have happened as of we're recording at 12.56 p.m. Central Time. So things could change. A rapid fire for you here. The Heat bring back two of their own guys in Dragic and Myers Leonard. Facundo Campazzo coming over from Real Madrid goes to the Denver Nuggets. And Joe Harris officially re-signs with the Brooklyn Nets on a four-year, $75 million deal. So a little less than what Fred Van Fleet got. 
The Lakers' first move of the offseason, free agency-wise at least, was Wesley Matthews on a one-year $3.6 million deal. Drew Eubanks goes back to the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah, you can shrug just as much as me. Dwayne Bacon goes from the Charlotte Hornets to the Orlando Magic. He gets a fresh start. I actually like this deal for the Magic. We'll see what the money is. Mason Plumley and Jalil Okafor both going to the Detroit Pistons in separate deals. Mason Plumley getting three years, 25. Jalil getting two years for four. Udonis Haslam on the minimum contract back to Miami again because Udonis Haslam will never die. Patrick Patterson returns to the Los Angeles Clippers after they lost Montrez Harrell. Jordan Clarkson stays with the Utah Jazz on a four-year deal worth $52 million, but the Jazz weren't done as they also signed Derek Favors to a three-year $30 million deal. I like what Utah's done so far this offseason. Two solid pickups. De'Aaron Fox, not a free agent, but he does get his extension worth five years, $163 million. Josh Jackson going to the Detroit Pistons. Another puzzling move for the Pistons, but they did it anyways. Danilo Gallinari, that was probably the biggest domino to fall up to this point at three years, $62 mil to the Atlanta Hawks. And then what was the biggest surprise was Dwight Howard to the Philadelphia 76ers after originally tweeting he was going to the back to the Lakers. Didn't happen. Rodney Hood stays with the Portland Trailblazers on a two-year deal with a team option on the back half worth $21 million. Malik Beasley, the restricted free agent, going back to Minnesota on a four-year $60 million deal. And then we thought it was Dwight Howard as the biggest surprise. And then we get Montrez Harrell on a two-year deal, $19 million, to the Los Angeles Lakers. Absolute madness here in the chat sports office when all that went down. The Dallas Mavericks' first move in free agency was re-signing one of their own as they brought back Trey, Trey Burke, not Trey Young, on a three-year, $10 million deal. Anthony Gill, played in the Euro Leagues, goes to the Washington Wizards, followed by Davis Bertans on a five-year, $80 million deal for the Latvian Laser. The Knicks' first move was uh, signing Alec Burks to a one-year deal on $6 million. Whatever, New York. The Pistons went out and paid Jeremy Grant after paying Jalil Okafor and paying Mason Plumley, I love the player in Jeremy Grant. I just think I'm kind of confused at what Detroit is doing, but they pay him three years, $60 million. Garrett Temple goes to the Chicago Bulls, Christian Wood to the Houston Rockets, and Derek Jones Jr. headed to the Portland Trailblazers. The Blazers having a sneaky good offseason so far. So that was kind of those Friday night transactions. If you were watching live with us, we already had all those broken down for you, ready to go. But what was the biggest surprise this offseason so far? Let me know. Free agent signing. Don't give me your trades. Give me your most surprising free agent signing. It's got to be Montrez Harrell or Gordon Hayward. Both of those guys getting paid and both those guys changing up their teams. Let me know who you got in the comments section. More deals that have come across. Marcus Morris, four years, 64 mil to return to the Clippers. Definitely an overpay, if you ask me. Pat Connaughton to the uh, Milwaukee Bucks on a two-year deal worth $8.3 million. Mo Harkless goes to the Miami Heat on a one-year deal for three point six, And Chris Dunn to the Hawks on a two-year $10 million deal. Circle back around to Pat Connaughton here as he's staying with Milwaukee. And I think this was a pivotal keep for them as they were starting to lose their depth pieces. And they they lost out on Dante, or not Dante DiVincenzo, excuse me, on Bogdan Bogdanovich. I think they had to bring back Connaughton. He's a high-energy guy, and I think it is a very good signing for Milwaukee. The Orlando Magic are going to bring back Michael Carter-Williams on a deal that is to be announced as the time that we are recording this. Denzel Valentine returns to the Chicago Bulls on a one-year deal worth $4.7 million. Jamichael Green goes to the Denver Nuggets to kind of make up for the loss of Jeremy Grant on a two-year deal worth 15 mil, and then Justin Holiday on a three-year deal to the Pacers worth 18 million. But you look at this Jamichael Green signing, sneaky good pickup for the Denver Nuggets to kind of make up for what they're missing in Jeremy Grant. He's not, you know, a knockdown lights out shooter, but he can play that stretch four, kind of stretch five position. If they lose Paul Millsap, this one becomes even more important for the Denver Nuggets. The Orlando Magic made another move as they re-signed James Ennis on a one-year deal. I'd expect that to be the minimum, but we'll have to see. Der terms are to be announced. Jakob Pertl returns to the uh, San Antonio Spurs excuse me, on a three-year deal worth $27 million. Robin Lopez to the Washington Wizards on a one-year deal. Probably the minimum, but nothing official there. The Grizzlies go out and re-sign one of their own and De'Anthony Melton on a four-year deal worth $35 million. None of these really too notable, but Robin Lopez to the Wizards, hey, they get some big men. And then a flurry of moves happened this Saturday morning as Bobby Portis goes to the Bucks along with DJ Augustine. Raul Neto goes to the, I believe, the Washington Wizards was the team that he ended up on. And Fred Van Fleet signing with the Toronto Raptors. Four years, $85 million on that one. Let's talk about him again. What a deal for Fred Van Fleet. What a deal for the Toronto Raptors. This is a great signing. I think both sides are going to be very, very happy on this one. 
And at the end of the day, there's a report coming out that he was never going to leave anyway. So he sticks with Toronto and nothing changes there. Four years, excuse me, five years, 85 million. I believe it was actually four years, 85 million right there for Fred Van Fleet. Three more moves came in on Saturday morning as Gordon Hayward, we already know, we recapped it at the top of this show, four years, $120 million. The Miami Heat went out and, re, uh, not re-signed, excuse me, they signed Avery Bradley for two years, $11.6 million, which meant that Jay Crowder was not able to return to Miami, and he goes to the Phoenix Suns on a three-year deal worth $30 million. Honestly, Good for the Phoenix Suns and good for Jay Crowder as he goes there and kind of adds a veteran presence for a team that, look, they're looking to make a push now. They add Chris Paul. They added Jay Crowder. They drafted Jalen Smith, which was kind of a questionable move. But this team's going for it, and the addition of Jay Crowder definitely helps them in a very tough and competitive Western Conference. The Miami Heat wanted to bring him back, but they just didn't have the money to do it. So Crowder goes to the Phoenix Suns on a $30 million deal worth three years. Hey, good for him. That's a pretty good payday for a guy that was, you know, barely making, was not making that much this past year with the Miami Heat. So I like what the Phoenix Suns are doing. I like what Jay Crowder is doing. So what I want you guys to tell me is what you guys like that is happening right now. What's your favorite signing that's come across so far? Now, we're again, we're recording this at about 1.07 p.m. Central Time here in Dallas, Texas. And things are continuing to change. But as soon as they happen, we'll keep you updated on Chat Sports. But let me know in the comment section your favorite signing so far.